Coming up on this edition of the EV Revolution Show, 2023 Kia Nero EV Review. Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host, as you know, and thanks very much for taking the time to watch my review video of this lovely 2023 Kia Nero EV, all electric, compact SUV. Uh, it's an excellent vehicle. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. First of all, I'd be remiss if I did not thank Kia Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days. I want to thank them very much for that. And we've had some really nice warm temperatures, got some clouds coming in today, maybe some rain later. So I'm gonna to try to get this review in before that happens. So sit back, relax, enjoy the review, and let me get at it. Well, you folks know that I'm really stoked about the Kia products. In fact, all the products coming from South Korea these days on old electrics, they're doing a great job. And Kia continues to do a great job on the Kia, on the Nero EV model, which they started back in 2019, if I remember, 2018 or 2019. It was my 2019 pick of the year, EV pick of the year. Not because it was the cheapest price, because it was the uh, longest range, because it was the fastest charging. It just has a really good package overall, especially as a commuter kind of inner city vehicle. Um, it's a great vehicle for that. It's got great room, yet not too big. It's not too small. It's easy to drive, easy to park, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, and Kia continues with that in the Nero, obviously in a new refresh. So this is a midlife refresh, I guess you could call it almost like me, but let's not go there. Um, so, it, you know, they've done some nice design language, so brought it up to their uh, current specs of design language and futuristic looks that they were coming out with their vehicles. So they've done a great job with it. So I'm really, really pleased that Kia has continued with the Nero product because it does fill, you know, kind of that uh, more economical segment of the marketplace, which this fits in very well. And we need more lower priced EVs to get more mass market adoption. So good job on Kia. Let me talk a little bit about more, more about this vehicle, especially if you look at the design. Now, as you can see by this design, it's got this two-tone look going forward, and it's much more noticeable on the road than the original Kia, uh, or the, the Nero. Um, you know, the Nero just kind of blends into the to all this sea of mid mid-size and compact SUVs that are out there. Um, so, but with this refresh, it really kind of has much more of a starkness, much more of awareness. And hey, you know, I'm. I'm something to be looked at and I'm, you know, I'm a nice vehicle. I drive nice and all that kind of stuff. So I really like this, this two-tone. Now this is an optional package that you get this, this gray, uh, this gray cladding that comes onto the vehicle here, um, as you can see and by the B-roll and everything. And it's a nice look, it kind of stands out. You know, it's not one of those vehicles normally that people would stop and look at, but I've had a few people look at this while I'm stopped at the lights or driving by a bus stop or whatever. So it does, you know, kind of garner that extent, that, that attention. And as you can see by the pictures, you know, the front, uh, all the, ex the entire exterior design language is all new for Kia uh, on this product for this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they've done a great job. You know, uh, everything is, the proportions are the same. They've just boxed it up, squared it up a bit more rather than the rounded shape that it was before. And I like the looks of it. it gives it a bit more of a beefier look yet does it really sacrifice anything from range or performance or anything like that. It's pretty well the same underneath. So I think they've done a good job even with the spoiler in the back, the rear wiper, uh, the LED uh, tail lights and everything that's going on, uh, the decent wheels. You know, it's just a nice clean package. Um, it's, it looks really nice and it's going to get a few looks from people. And, and um, you know, I, I, it's very functional as well. And I think that's probably what I'm going to use a lot in this review video is the form and function aspect. Everything serves a purpose on here. Yes, there's some nice uh, cladding, but there's nothing on here to say that this is, an, this is an EV either. There's no markings like there were before that said EV. It just says narrow. That's it. So you have to look that there's no front grille, obviously. You've got the charge port in the front. Um, there's no exhaust pipes. That's the only way. And then if you, you know, if you listen to it as it uh, silently crawled by you, then you would realize it's, it's an EV. So, you know, it's good. They're trying to blend this in, continue with a really good platform that they've had and a vehicle that they've had and just modernize it and bring it up to speed. And I think they've done a great job on the design language side. As you swing around and take a closer look at the front, 
I'll tell you a little bit about the power element in this. This is still a single motor front wheel drive vehicle that it was before. Uh, very similar, if not exact, horsepower and torque ratings of 201 uh, horsepower and 188 pound feet of torque. Doesn't sound like a lot, folks, but I tell you, this, this thing is peppy. And it, it, even the previous predecessor of it with the same, basically the platform, um, was peppy as well. I had no problem, even in eco mode. I've been running this all week in eco mode. I've had no problem passing anybody, getting up to highway speeds uh, from an on-ramp and, and all, you know, accelerating away from a light, all that kind of normal stuff. It's at no problem at all. You know, this is not a racing car. This is not something you're going to track. It's an everyday use commuter EV vehicle. And there's, there's actually a lot of room in here. Then I'll show you the interior coming up. So the single motor front wheel drive variant works and there's no reason really for an all wheel drive vehicle. Um, I know I've had this discussion before on, especially on forums and other channels. Uh, I can see all wheel drive, especially when you get a ton of snow, but you know, I grew up uh, and have been driving for, uh, you know, well over, I'm trying to have to think about it now, well over 45 years anyway. And uh, my Model 3 is the first all wheel drive car I've ever had. And I've had gone through dozens and dozens of Canadian winters in either rear wheel or front wheel drive. So you just have to know the vehicle, put a good set of snow tires on and you're rocking. So, so I talked about obviously the propulsion on this, the single motor. From a battery perspective, this has a 64.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. I believe it's very similar to what it was before. Um, and it gives, it provides all that, that power to the motor that I mentioned. Um, the charging port, one thing I like about the, uh, about this product is the, uh, and a lot of the South Koreans is they put the charging ports up front. I think that's extremely hand, handy. You've got your standard J1772, of course, and then you've got your CCS, uh, charging for DC fast charging. Now on that charging note, Kia does not give publish any uh, charging rates like peak charging rates on this they, they do what a lot of other manufacturers do is just provide times because they think that's more resident to consumers that if i stop for 20 minutes i'm going to get x kind of range back and that that makes sense but you know us knuckleheads that like to like to know a little bit more technical details uh want to understand some of the peak rates and what i will do in a little bit is i will take this to a fast charge and see what i can pull i'll go to 100 or 150 kilowatt fast charger that I can find. And uh, I'm just trying to drain this battery a little bit less to get it down to about 10%. I've been riding all week on one charge on this, folks. Uh, it's been really, really w doing well. But on the charging, you know, it's got your standard level one, which is gonna take you uh, three days to charge in a trickle charge if you're gonna do that. But most people are gonna get an EVSC level two at home installed, or if you have public charging or charging at work, you'll be able to charge this in about six hours at 11 kilowatts from 10 to 100%, which is, again, most people go on a daily trip, come back, plug it in, charge the 90, 95, whatever the manufacturers recommend on their, on their EVs to charge. If you're gonna DC fast charge it, um, they do say that it'll take just over an hour on a 50 kilowatt charger to go from 10 to 80%. You go to a 100 or a 100 or 100 higher kilowatt charger, uh, it's about 43 to 45 minutes. Now the range on this, the EP ready range is 407 kilometers. I'm looking to do that bang on right now. So since I've got the vehicle, I've reset all the trips and everything, reset the efficiencies, and I've been driving just normal. In eco mode, I've been using iPedal all the time. I'm seeing right now in the 14 to 15 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer range, so which I think is pretty good for a car like this. So I believe that 407 kilometers in the nice warm temperatures is a very achievable range. In fact, if I had more time with this vehicle, I could probably exceed that quite easily, probably get into the 430, 440 range. Um, if I remember in 2019, I was able to get over 400 quite easily on that vehicle so uh, this is a capable vehicle in the summer and in the again in the winter you look at 30 40 percent rain uh, degradation range loss excuse me because of temperatures again still very much 200 250 kilometers 300 kilometers or so uh, a very much a daily driver vehicle drive it you know do your 200 kilometers come back home plug it in and, and rinse and repeat for the next day so a very capable vehicle from all those metrics all right, so I'm pleasantly uh, surprised because I actually didn't look at the trunk until the front, uh, the front until I started uh, filming actually, but this actually does have a front. I was quite surprised with that. So as you can see, I open it up and I'll uh, show you here. It's very similar to what we see in the Ionic 5s and the EV6s and the Genesis GV60s. Basically about the same. You can store your mobile charger here, got a little net and uh, it's enough to do something. So that's a bit of a surprise because the other uh, version of the Nero, the original version did not have any sort of frunk. 
So um, it's a nice a use of the space. I'm glad that they put this in there. It's a very simple application of it. And all you've got is your fluids to see what their levels are. You've got your windshield washer fluid here to fill and that's about it. So, hey, a nice little surprise. All right, before I show you the interior, let's just look at uh, getting in. As you folks don't always try to look at entry and exit of a vehicle, see how easy it is. Now this has a nice wide open door, very close to 90% 90 90 perpendicular open, I would say probably about 80 degrees, uh, sorry, not percent, but degrees of opening. So that's good. That means if you have room in the parking space, you'll be able to get into this quite easily rather than having to kind of shimmy through a door that maybe opens only like this. So I always like it when they, ex when they extend the reach of the door. And again, that just adds to the practical practicality and versatility. That's what I'm trying to say. Big words on a Saturday morning and I haven't had my coffee, folks. Give me a break here. So as you can see, a pretty nice wide opening to get in. And if I get in here, good amount of headroom. I didn't have to duck too hard. Got some grab bars here, a grab handle. So this is nice. I have the front seat set to where I would be as a passenger. I'm about five, six, five, seven. Um, and I got lots of leg room. I've got a couple of fists of, of knee room here. Um, nice flat floor. I like that. The seat is high. I can put my, um, my feet under it um, because it's, it's a power seat, so it's up a bit. I like that. It's a very comfortable cabin back here. You've got a nice armrest. You've got some vents. Um, the headliner is raised a little bit here. So I'm 5'7". I've got about a fist of headroom. So if somebody's going to be over 6'2", six, six is going to probably feel a little cramped. and going to have to slouch a little bit. Uh, just to, so their head doesn't bump so much, but definitely enough room because it's got this premium roof here and the sunroof and everything going on. So you do lose a, probably about an inch of headspace there. Otherwise, comfortable vehicle. Um, four for sure in comfort here. Five in a pinch, but otherwise a very comfortable cabin. I do like this and I like the, the aspect of being able to get in and out of this vehicle quite easily. Got to like that. So staying with the practicality aspect, this, have a, this one does have a power trunk. I believe it's a power trunk through all the, premium, the, the trims, but you'd have to double check that on the website. As you can see, a nice high lift. It is adjustable, right? Just for pressing and holding the button if you want to lower the height. This is the max height, so it's got a nice amount of height room, yet you can still reach the handle and push the button down. A nice deep well, um, as you can see by the pictures, there's not a lot going on underneath other than just a tire the uh, repair kit. Um, and, and your mobile charger basically that comes with it. But it's a nice deep well. I put a couple of good size suitcases in here and they've been able to fit my cam my camera gear and signage fit today coming out here. And it's got your 60, 40 seats folded down. So for cargo space behind the, um, the second row, as it is now in this configuration, you've got about 646 liters of boot space, which equates to 22.8 cubic feet. And if you fold those seats down, those 60-40 seats behind the first row, then you've got about 1,805 liters or 63.7 cubic feet. So a good amount of space in here. You can put a lot of stuff here. If you need to do a massive Costco run or something like that, um, you know, take your kid to a hockey game and throw all kinds of stuff in here, you can definitely do it. All right, so let's have more of a look on the interior now. Right, just do a quick tour of the interior. Again, it's very functional, it's very capable. This has the upgraded trim, so you've got the Harman Kardon uh, sound system, which is good. You've got uh, memory level front seats, uh, level one and two, or um, user one and two. You've got all your window controls and everything. Got nice power seats, multiple way. These are very comfortable seats. Um, I like them because they've come at the right time for cooling because we've had some really hot temperatures here. So this upgrade, the top spec package, has the cooling, cooling seats as well, which, ex which work very, very well. So it's a nice cockpit. Again, the new Kia design language here in the screens, 10.3 inch screens, I believe on here, dual screens. So you've got your driver's binnacle, got some buttons on the side. This comes with a nice little uh, metal uh, pedal uh, up upgrades as well with uh, this package. So it's a nice clean environment um, and very functional. Again, everything, it's one thing I like about this product is just very functional. Everything is where you think. So let's get in here and just have a quick look. Won't go through everything right now. That's my current trip that I'm doing. Um, and I'll continue to monitor that. You've got some steering wheel controls for your um, uh, ADAS features, your lane keeping, cruise control, spacing, some modes, uh, radio buttons, things like that. Uh, wipers, stocks for lights, turn signals, and windshield washers, both front and rear. And again, multiple menus that you can look at here. Um, compasses, tire pressures. Uh, again, if you're in that uh, language and you can different uh, trips that you can change as well. 
Um, again, just standard Kia menus that we're starting to see now throughout their product lines. This is kind of where it defaults into this just basic clock uh, and funky background. And then you've got your two swipes of different menus that you can uh, look at. Um, EV menu is kind of where I go to uh, just to see state of charge for the battery um, and what the estimated difference is. Um, and then if you've got anything scheduled here, if you're looking for charging areas, uh, and then here is where you set some of your your, uh, your max rates, DC charger 90, AC is 100, all that kind of stuff if you need to change the currents. Uh, let's say you're at a camping trailer site and you don't want to push a 15 amp or whatever, you can reduce that down on your AC charge. So there, this does have battery conditioning mode, so I forgot about that, so that's nice to see. There's a utility mode as well. Um, if you're um, looking to power electronic devices, like the VTL, you'll put that on there. Um, it has smart regen. I've been just using it on iPedal all the time, but again, you know, lo locking and voice prompts and all this kind of stuff. So pretty basic menus that get you what you need to do. Your maps and navs are standard stuff. Um, you would have menus, of course, where you want to go, all that kind of stuff. Search for um, chargers if you want that kind of stuff. Um, Kia dealerships, of course, they want to get their two cents in. So it's got a nice a bunch of features on this. Nothing that's earth shattering, but it's very capable again. Valet mode, if you're going to hand this off and that stuff. Um, it does have a distributed uh, environment where you got your HVAC on the lower controls here. So these are touch um, sensitive. There's no buttons, only for uh, the turn it on and off. There's a button, and uh, which I believe is here. There we go. And then you can turn it off and on, and then just your temperature controls. And if you're going to sync. Um, and uh, heat it, uh, heat for the rear window or defog. You've got your seat controls down here. Now, one thing, if you want to get to other features, you can press this arrow up button and you'll get to some of the quick features, like if you want to get the radio, and that's kind of what I have to do to get to my radio screen here. Um, because if you watch this, it'll go back to the climate. It defaults in at the climate setting, which is typical what we're seeing on the Kia products now. There's an auto, of course, features and all that kind of stuff. Underneath there, you've got a, uh, a 12 volt outlet here, which is nice to see. So if you are using something, I just can't figure out how to open this. There we go. That's how we open it. Uh, 12 volt. You've got a USB here. You've got a, a for, I think, integration for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You've got a charging uh, USB-C here. Now, this is uh, the qui uh, key. The quick charging pad that's down here, that's an option to throw your phone there. That lights up telling you it's charging. On off button. Again, the rotary controls for your transmission. All your other seat controls here, your heating, your cooling, your steering wheel heater for the winter. Cameras for parking. It's got basic cameras, nothing too crazy. Um, let's do get away from that. So there's your rear camera. That's about what it shows you. There's not a whole lot of options there in the camera settings. Um, parking sensors on or off. If you don't want it to beep in a car wash, that kind of auto hold. But if you put it in I pedal, it will automatically hold for you. Then if I continue on with the tour, you've got center console, a very small console, but enough to put, I like these kind of um, these uh, drink holders, which will hold multiple sizes, a little storage bin there, another little storage bin that's covered and nothing else funky going on here. A nice little armrest. Very adequate. And again, the door pockets are okay. You've got a fair size glove box here. Again, standard kind of fair, nothing too crazy. They've got some ambient lighting strips that show up here at night. Um, that's kind of the only spot I could find the ambient lighting, but it is what it is. And then up here, you've got your standard controls for your moonroof, sunroof, your LED lights, and your if you subscribe to any of the SOS functionality through uh, through Kia's uh, subscription platforms, then you'll have some of that capabilities. Uh, nice, uh, of course, standard um, vanity mirror here for you. Again, I like that it has grab handles on every portion of that. That's something that most people don't put a driver's grab gra grab handle that's what i'm trying to say on here overall a very pleasant environment a nice dash this does have a heads-up display as well i've turned it off i'm not a big hud uh, hud fan i've never really had them <laughs> i'm just used to driving without them so uh, i think having the binnacle and information is fine but this does have a heads-up display which gives you basic information so that's basically about it for the front let's go check out the back so here's the rear again very similar not very big door pockets you could put something small in there i wouldn't even put a cup of coffee because it's fairly slanted but you could put some keys or pack of gum or something in here then you have a nice again um uh, arrangement of the rear seat adequate leg room these hard map uh, pocket holders here this is the new headrest that we're seeing now in all the kia products the newer design headrests uh, going from the ev6 and on, onwards so we're seeing that a uh, nice little uh, cup holder here and we can uh, Again, we've got some vents down here for that. That's about it. Your charge ports are on each seat. So you've got one for each uh, passenger here. 
on the sides here so you plug that in for USB-C charging and that's about it nice flat floor so definitely comfortable for the feet again nice supportive seats easy to put down 60 40 split as I said with your integrated seat belts and your of course uh, child safety anchors and all that stuff so they've done a very good practical job back here all right hope you enjoyed all the interior shots now let's uh, go for a drive and I'll give you my thoughts about that all right, just some quick driving thoughts on this refreshed Kia Niro. Absolutely love it. It's a great vehicle to drive. It's small enough to nimble enough to get in and out of traffic. To park is easy. You sit high, you got nice visibility. I like it. I like the refresh look. I like the refresh interior. I think they've done a great job overall. I love the 2019 or the earlier version Niro. It was my pick of the year in 2019. Overall package price you get for this is really good. Now, the thing is though, in the last four or five years, we've had a lot more competition. So this this spot space, um, the midsize and compact SUV space has grown tremendously from an EV marketplace of view or perspective. So there's a lot more choice here, but I think this refresh Kia Niro still holds a spot. Now the, the, weak, the weakness of this is going to be the fast charging, right? It's not going to be the fastest chargers like the Ionic 5, um, like the Ionic 6, you know, like some of those vehicles. Uh, the Genesis GV60 that are going to charge much faster. Mind you, they're more expensive vehicles. So you've got to look at a cost comparison on these. From a drivability perspective, absolutely love it. It's been a pleasure to drive all week. I've been getting better on efficiencies. I'm down to 15 and a half right now. Uh, kilowatt hours per 100 after driving 245 kilometers. So I'm going to continue to drive to get this battery low and then try to do a fast charge just to see what it'll pull because Kia doesn't give you charging numbers they just give you times and whether it's on a 350 kilowatt charger or a 100 kilowatt charger it's virtually the same time so to me that means that it probably has like a 65 or 70 kilowatt hour peak something like that it's, it, it's under 100 kilowatt hour peak is my guess but i'll find out when i go do the fast charge in a couple of days but overall it's been a, it's been a joy to drive um, i've used some of the lane keeping and stuff and i'll have a quick video showing you that uh, but a very quiet cabin as you can hear i've got snow tires running on this so kia had left snow tires on we've got this unusually warm weather this week all week we've been in plus 25 to plus 30 degrees c temperatures which is highly unusual so these snow tiles are snow tires are really sticky making them noisier than they normally would be and making the ride a little mushy right you get that sponginess in the ride so so i'm dealing with that it's not uh, it's not a safety thing it's just you could feel it if this had proper old seasons it would be quieter and and the rolling resistance would be even that much better so my efficiencies i could probably get into the 14s consistently now at these temps and how i'm driving it but overall a great vehicle to drive nice room for four people lots of room in and out easy access you sit high all the controls are easy i've got two pet peeves when it comes to controls one is eye pedal you got to turn it on every single time you want to it doesn't retain the settings even if you log into a driver profile so if i'm missing something please a kia or somebody comment on the channel there and let me on this review and let me know i always have to double uh, t click the uh, paddle here uh, to turn on eye pedal because I, I want to drive in one pedal all the time that's just me i'm used to it and every ev i get into i try to do the same thing it works really well it's this nice smooth eye pedal again uh, the south koreans have done great jobs in one pedal driving so nothing bad to say there i just wish it would retain that setting also the display so every time i get in and out of this vehicle turn it off and on i get back to this welcome screen which is just a digital clock and some background uh, no, uh, some background stuff going on uh, and it doesn't retain the last screen that I had on there so for example I'm listening to the radio I've got my station set my favorites I'm going up and down I can see what radio stations playing get out of the car come back in I have to do a couple of taps to get back into that screen right and that's annoying every single time every single time I got to do that and you know again i just it's a it's not a big deal it's it's a first world problem obviously but you know getting in and out of this car if you're doing lots of in and outs every day having to go back into that can be a real pain in the butt i know you can set up a favorite a screen with this button here 
Uh, there's a start button, so you could fit, done that. It's been set to EV, so if I wanted to see what my battery was at, I can push that. It'll come up with the screen because the gauge just shows you tick marks, you know, every 25%. But if I wanted to see a percentage reading, I, ha I can get into that screen. But if I wanted, you know, again, if I want it for the radio, I'd have to set that up. I just wish they'd make it easy and just retaining the last screen that you were at and leaving it there, whatever it was, right? Um, so that would be my two suggestions to Kia to fix in the software update. Otherwise, fantastic car. I love it. It's quiet. It's not luxury quiet, but it's quiet. Um, front wheel drive is pep very peppy enough uh, for the single motor. There's no questions in getting up to speed. You're not going to race and track this vehicle. It's going to handle very adequately. Good amount of uh, storage space. I'm always really happy with something of this size and the affordability factor is there to a point. And I'll talk about pricing coming up. But as far as driving, excellent. All right, just checking out the adaptive cruise and the lane keeping here on the uh, Kia Nero 2023 model. Uh, as you can see, I've engaged it at speed. I'm on the highway in a fairly calm uh, traffic environment right now. It's got a good wind blowing across uh, the highway here, so uh, the, the SUV is getting pushed a little bit around, but because it's an EV and got good weight distribution, it's uh, fairly planted. Anyway, um, as you can here it's relatively quiet even with the the wind noise and as far as the lane keeping goes it's maintaining pretty good um, I'm only touching the wheel when it tells me to as you can see it's got the green steering wheel showing the speed the HDA highway driving assist activated uh, the green arrows with the lanes showing that it's in lane keeping mode and adaptive cruise and I've set the spacing for three four is being the max so uh, staying in the lanes quite nicely as you can see here um, it'll take the turn on its own now it's asking me to touch the steering wheel so just give it a quick uh, nudge and it resets that comes up about every 20 to 30 seconds I guess it depends as always um, on these things so um, as you can see keeping the lane pretty good when we did the when it came out of the curve it went a little bit back and forth on it but uh, probably because again we've got this wind gusting here I've got soft tires and um, uh, it's just, you know, trying to keep up with all that. But maintaining the lanes quite nicely. I'm not, uh, doesn't seem to be going, edging into one versus the other. Um, as you can see, if I pull back just a little bit to give you a bigger frame. So good job. I mean, their, um, their assist and lane keeping worked really well on the 2019 model when I uh, reviewed that. So it seems to be about the same system. It's uh, keeping the speed, keeping the spacing up nicely and all that kind of stuff. No bells and whistles here. This is just a pretty standard adaptive cruise and lane keeping level two autonomy, nothing more. Driver assist, again, that's the key. When you see HDA, uh, DA, driver assist acronyms, that's exactly what they're for. Don't rely on them for full-time driving. Anyway, good job, Kia. All right, so I'm going to just uh, try a fast charging here on this 2023 Nero EV because, it, again, Kia doesn't really tell you what the peak rate is. So I've got the battery down to 19%. It's kind of the best I could get uh, in my week of driving. I haven't charged it yet. So I'm here at an Electrify Canada at the Toronto Premier Outlet to try a 150 kilowatt CCS charger. Uh, again, uh, as I mentioned in the charging side, between from 100 kilowatts or upwards, it's basically the same time from 10 to 80%, which leads... All right, so we plugged it in. We're at a 20% state of charge. And as you can see, sorry for the reflections, it's hanging around 79 to 80 kilowatts, which is about where I thought it was gonna be. I thought maybe closer to 75. So 80 kilowatts seems to be the peak on this. I think if I got this down to 10%, maybe we could have pulled 85, 85 kilowatts. I'm not sure. Uh, again, it's not a published number by Kia. So um, it seemed to be about 80 kilowatts hanging in there at 20% state of charge. It's telling me that it's 45 minutes to get from 20% to 80%, which is where the limit is set on this. Uh, again, which would be, you know, about right for, for that uh, road tripping. Does tell you inside in the binnacle um, what the remaining time is. I've set the DC charge to 80%. 
uh, as far as the max goes here. And you can <coughs> adjust that, excuse me. So it's just telling me about 40 minutes and that what it's pulling. So 64 kilowatts. So you do get that here at 24% state of charge. So, all right, so 10 minutes, uh, I've got up to about 34% of charge. I'm gonna pull it down because I don't really need to charge up. I'm not that far from home. Uh, it boot went up again to 78, 79 kilowatts. So it seems to be 80, seems to be the peak. Again, maybe if I had this to 10%, I might get to 85 kilowatts, I'm not sure, but let's go with 80 and that seems to work. So again, decent. Uh, and you understand from a road tripping what your, what your parameters are like. So, all right. All right, so just to give you some more thoughts about this, hope you enjoyed the driving information and all that. You know, this does come with available uh, suite of ADAS or uh, driver safety and assistance features. Of course, your standard forward collision warning, and automated uh, emergency braking, AEB, standard lane departure warning, lane keep assist, uh, standard adaptive cruise control with lane centering feature. And as you saw, the, the ACC in the lane keeping works pretty well on a vehicle like this. Again, it's all level two autonomy. You know, don't sit back and sleep at the wheel and think this is FSD. Uh, but remember, all that stuff technically, legally, is not legal to, to actually let your car drive by itself. So, and your insurance company may not insure you if you get into an accident and something happens. So just remember that, folks. So these are level two autonomy controls um, and they work really well and it comes really well equipped for the average consumer, the average need, especially as more of a computer commuter vehicle. Now if we get into the price point, again, one, one thing I strongly believe about this vehicle is that it's economical or economical as much as, as prices will allow it today. We know that EVs have not reached cost parity yet. Um, they are still more expensive overall in general versus a comparable internal combustion vehicle. But again, there's many things that I won't get into in this episode that talk about lowering your total cost of ownership, the return on that extra money, the investment that you make in an EV, especially in all electric, to get that difference back is about three, four to three to five years, let's say for the average driver, where you recoup that additional money you've spent on the savings that you have by that vehicle. And we're not even talking about a lot of the other benefits that EVs give you, strictly financial. So from a Canadian MSRP pricing, they are priced uh, as well as they're going to be in this marketplace is my understanding. And if you look at the base premium model, which comes with a lot of stuff, it's $44,995, so just under $45,000, which I think is a good value. If you step up to the premium plus model, you add things like a heat pump. And then if you want to get the limited model, which is what this one is, the fully spec model out, and that bumps the price to $52,995 if you look at that trim. So for a top spec, trim with the power sunroof uh, and everything that you see here uh, at that price point. And remember folks, uh, here in Ontario, or at least in Canada, uh, and including Ontario, of course, you've got the $5,000 federal incentive that gets applied to, to all trims of this vehicle. And if you are in, in Quebec or in British Columbia or other provinces in Canada that provide ZEV rebates, um, you can get as much as $13,000 off this vehicle in those, some of those other provinces. So, you know, taking $5,000 or $13,000 off, that adds up to a lot of value that this vehicle brings. And again, I'm going to circle back to that value and practicality aspect of this vehicle. I've always liked the Neo uh, for that particular reason, that it's a nice package at a fairly affordable price. You know, hey, $50,000 is a lot of money, folks. I totally agree. I get it. But remember, and a lot of people don't know this, or may not know this, in Canada last year, the average vehicle purchase price across the board, this is, this is for uh, um, uh, LDV vehicles, um, uh, you know, just your standard consumer vehicles, um, was just over $58,000, if I remember correctly, 58 and change, 58. So, you know, I get people saying, oh, all electrics are for the rich, it's, they're too expensive, but the average price of a vehicle, a new vehicle in Canada, is over $58,000. So people are spending money on new vehicles and that's what the average price is. You can have lower and you can have a lot higher. It is what it is, folks. So this fits in well under that average price point, even for a fully spec'd at $53,000 Kia Nero Limited with that, five, even the $5,000 off. You know, you're out the door at 59,000 taxi and something like that with zero down. All trims, very well priced. All right, so just to wrap up and summarize this review, um, you know, it's got good driving range. It's, I really like the design. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with Kia's um, movement that inspires, if I've got their slogan correctly. And this thing looks like it's moving, just standing still. So I do like that. They've really modernized this. 
inside and out. They've got a nice generous space and good features and, and good value again for what you get. You know, some people say the, the acceleration is eh. I say, well, that's all you need. Again, zero to 60 in seven seconds, six, eight, seven, two, whatever that number is, is more than adequate. Um, and at least in Canada, it is eligible for the EV rebates. You'll have to check at the US because now with the whole new IRA, there's really not a lot that's eligible at this point as OEM scrambled to change their manufacturing and sourcing pro uh, uh, processes to try to get vehicles to comply. So you'll have to check, but there, there are also local state and sometimes even other um, things that you could look at, incentives you can look at to take advantage for all electric vehicles. So I would definitely check that out. I think it's a well-rounded, um, very, very well outfitted uh, a compact SUV. Again, this is not even a midsize, this is a compact SUV. Um, and I think that it, it's, it handles itself very, very capable in the sea of SUVs that are out there. If you don't need a three row, you don't need a huge, huge, big SUV. This is a very competent one. It's got enough room to make you comfortable, yet it's not too big that you've got a lot of wasted space and bulk that you have to haul around and try to park and put in a garage and all this kind of stuff. This thing fit very nicely in my garage. It was easy to park in with my, our other vehicle, easy to plug in because of that front access charging port, right? So I love all that kind of stuff. So as what I recommend this vehicle, Hey, a big thumbs up as I did in 2019. I'll say it again. Excellent, excellent vehicle. Highly recommend it. Good job on Kia for the new refresh. I highly recommend it. Uh, and if you're on the fence, uh, do some research, but definitely go check one of these out. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in to my review of this 2023 Kia Niro EV, all electric. Good job, as I mentioned again. Just again, want to quickly thank Kia Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days. Always a pleasure. All the other details coming up on how to contact me, uh, Patreon, all that kind of stuff is coming up in the end credits. So please stick around. And of course, I always thank all my Patreon supporters. You guys and gals know who you are. I'm always very humbled on that, uh, on that support that you give me. So again, thanks very much for watching. And until the next time, everybody stay safe and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.